Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, September 23rd, 2022. The IRS, Agents of the Police State. Now, it's perfectly natural for people who are solidly committed to a particular political position to have a hard time understanding how anyone could possibly hold an opposing view. When faced with opposition, they often react with disbelief and consider that opposition to be not only unfair, but illogical. Now, in the U.S., most of us accept the fact that if a majority of our citizens elect politicians who favor policies that we oppose, we have to accept those policies until we can convince enough of our fellow Americans to elect people who support policies that we agree with. Now, of course, we assume that the party in power is going to appoint people to federal agencies who will act to further their party's policies. However, governments only survive when they have the support of the governed. This support is based not only on benefits provided by the government, but also on the concept that, for the most part, everyone is treated fairly. Now, the governed will tolerate some special treatment to favored groups as long as they're not made to feel that they are being treated unfairly in the process. As long as people believe that the basic functions of government are being fairly applied to all, we can tolerate living under some policies we don't like. Now, this means that people expect federal agencies like the FDA, the FBI, and the IRS to perform the jobs delegated to them by Congress in a fair manner, regardless of which party is in power. No one should get either favorable or unfavorable treatment based on which party they belong to or which policies they support or oppose. Now, while many of us have felt that the IRS was biased against people on one side of the political spectrum, it was difficult to prove that conclusively until we learned about Lois Lerner's activities with Tea Party groups seeking nonprofit designations. As explained in the Judicial Watch Weekly update, depositions given by Lerner and Holly Paz have been unsealed. Now, remember, Lerner was the former director of the Exempt Organizations Unit of the IRS during the Obama administration, and Paz was her top aide and former IRS Director of Office of Rulings and Agreements. Now, Judicial Watch states that Lois Lerner's team knew that most Tea Party organizations were legally entitled to tax-exempt status. The unsealed deposition transcripts reveal the unfair treatment that conservative groups received at the hands of the Obama IRS. Lerner and Paz oversaw a bureaucratic tangle designed to single out these groups, delay and deny their applications for tax-exempt status, and force them to disclose their donors' names. Paz admits that she knew from the beginning that there was not sufficient legal basis to deny most of the targeted group's tax-exempt status. And in a released email exchange, Lerner also stated that her team should deny the exemptions, but give reasons that obscured the fact that the real reason for the denial was the organization's political beliefs. A lawsuit filed against this improper IRS discrimination was settled in 2017, and the plaintiffs received $3.5 million dollars. Then, Attorney General Jeff Sessions said, quote, The IRS use of these criteria as a basis for heightened scrutiny was wrong and should never have occurred. It is improper for the IRS to single out groups for different treatment based on their names or ideological positions. Any entitlement to tax exemption should be based on the activities of the organization and whether they fulfill the requirements of the law, not the policy positions adopted by members or the name chosen to reflect those views, end of quote. Now, the mainstream media and the D.C. elite share many of Ms. Lerner's political beliefs. They just don't understand how anyone could possibly find anything wrong with what she did. In their eyes, her actions may not have been legal, but they were perfectly justified because she was only doing what was best for the country. The only thing she really did wrong was get caught. In the end, Ms. Lerner never suffered any consequences for her improper and illegal actions. No criminal charges were ever brought against her, and she was allowed to retire with full benefits. When people criticize the IRS for leaking the confidential tax returns of wealthy Americans, the D.C. elite and their minions say, well, mistakes happen. And when it's pointed out to them that this is a federal crime for which someone should be prosecuted, the D.C. elites and their minions promise they'll get around to it, but they never do and no one is ever punished. In conclusion, 
In our youth, we were shocked when our parents didn't agree with our request to borrow the car and go to a party. We presented our reasons clearly, but seemingly without logic on their side, they said no. As we grew older and became parents ourselves, many of us understood Mark Twain when he said, quoting, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned in seven years, end of quote. Well, for a number of years, Americans have been asking the D.C. elite and their minions to replace the income payroll tax system with the fair tax. They logically point out that the fair tax will grow the economy faster, will bring good jobs home and protect U.S.-made products, will eliminate the need for the IRS, eliminate the need for any type of filings by individual American taxpayers, will eliminate the ability of the D.C. elite to punish taxpayers who have dared to question their actions, the fair tax will allow all Americans to receive their entire paychecks and allow all Americans to determine the amount of federal tax they pay by how they spend their money. But of course, the D.C. elite and their minions consistently reject the fair tax and continue to view any criticism of the income tax as unfair and illogical. Now, many fair tax advocates have gotten older, but unlike Mark Twain, we still see no reason to keep the present income tax system. We see it for what it is, an unfair, outdated, inefficient, invasive, and abusive system that the elites use to intimidate and control us while enriching themselves in the process. The D.C. elite and their minions are not really concerned about IRS abuses, as long as those abuses are directed against people that they believe are less informed, less intelligent, and who dare to protest against any of their ideas and policies. The D.C. elite and their minions attack critics of the income payroll tax system as being greedy, selfish, and just not smart enough to understand what's really good for them. In fact, the D.C. elite and their minions have already told us that the IRS will target groups of people who may question their policies and methods. They're targeting not only the wealthiest Americans who often donate heavily to their opponents, but also the legions of small business owners, the majority of whom don't support the correct policies. In truth, there are really only two groups of people in the United States. The first group are the ones who support having an aggressive IRS that maintains an incomprehensible tax code and requires all of us to keep extensive records and file complicated tax returns that tell the government every detail of our personal finances. Now, they don't say it out loud, but a primary reason that this group wants to keep the income tax in place is that they know that the IRS can be used to intimidate and coerce their opponents. The second group of people are the ones who support freedom, who want to eliminate the IRS and take back control of their lives. So, which group do you belong to? The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. The fair tax will allow Americans to take back control of their government and their lives. Join us and take back control of our country and our lives, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really wanted to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay. And we'll know how much tax we're paying because taxes will no longer be hidden from us. They'll be clearly shown on every retail receipt. If you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. 
If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 